think that way, but unfortunately they don't, and that's very sad on our front, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it, I I think it's just amazing that it's that Bewitches even out on DVD because for me it was like a childhood dream come true. I mean, only being able to listen to it for so many years. And I still have mm-hmm. a couple of few of those cassettes too, which is pretty amazing. Um, I don't have anything to play them on, but I still have it. Sure. But but you know, just I remember being like ten years old and just like wishing there was some way you could actually, you know, watch this show at your leisure. And so for me getting just getting these DVDs, even though it took forever for all the seasons to come out, but um for me it was just like my the little kid in me was very, very happy. I loved coming across these openings as an adult because then I was just so enamored with the nostalgia coming across these commercials that the cast did throughout this, I would even say the first four seasons, um, even if in the fifth season. Yeah, the fifth season with the Kodak commercial. And just coming across that, the fact that the cartoon Samantha drawing in the closing credits was not there, it was actually the sponsored logo, I was just completely and utterly mesmerized by that. I I, I don't know. I I used to think that was weird, but now I don't think it's weird anymore. But (laughs) (laughs) I did. I used to think, wow, I must be weird for liking that, like this stuff like that. But uh, well, you are, but but so am I, and so are a lot of other people. I mean, again, I'm I'm that dude that loves openings and closing credits on TV shows. This oh, I hear dude, you. This is the dude that always talks about my theme, and my theme being that of the As the World Turns theme from the 80s. Oh, yes, yes. That's that's literally everybody when they – now on Twitter they just call it Novell's theme. I was like, well, you should because it is. <laughs> so, <laughs> nice. That's even better than Nadia's theme, and it, and it even sort of sounds similar. Yeah, right? It's now, now <laughs> called, it's now no longer called The World Turns On and On. It's now called Novel Steve from many of people on Twitter. I'm just like, yeah, it should be. Nice. Nice. I like, I like that. It's you got your own theme. You, you've arrived. I have arrived. And now it's like, I told people, it's like, I don't really care about the other opening and closing days. I just care about mine, which is <laughs> which will be turning 35 on November 2nd. Oh, I remember 35. It'll be 35 on November 2nd. Yeah. And I told people, I was like, yep, I advise you to block me now because all you'll be seeing me is posting these themes all day. <laughs> every but single... But then it's Novell's day. You can totally do that. And it'll be every remix. So, because <laughs> it had three. So... <laughs> nice. I, I will, I'll be tuning in for that because I'm going mean, to... I see it in my head. I don't remember the exact time. I know, I know as soon as I hear it, I'm going to go, yeah, that's it. I totally remember that. Because oh. that was when I started watching. Oh, dude, you, you would totally. I'll post it right now for you if you want. So... Wait. <laughs> now that's what I call magic. Yeah. I'm literally going to YouTube right now and getting it for you. <laughs> nice. I love this. I love this. I'm, I'm going to my 50,000 tabs and trying to find Twitter. Okay, here it is. Oh, I love how YouTube comes up and says, watch it again, and it has the Bewitched Syndicated opening from the York years from In Color. And I'm like, yeah, that's the one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's the one. It's the one that uses her Twitch in it. It's fine, you know. It's the one. It's got it's the, the right one. Twitch in it. I was, I literally said that to a lot of people. I was like, I can't believe it took all the way up until season five in its original run for it to use her twitch in the opening. I just can't get over it. (laughs) Like, why did it take so long? Yeah, they used it in the bumpers, but they couldn't do it. They couldn't do it until season five. Oh, that's right, the bumpers. That's right, the bumpers. Because they only included that in the season eight DVD, and that was the only reason I even knew about it. I was like, oh, oh, we'll be right back. Okay. Yeah, I was surprised. With With music from first season in there, or at least second season. I was just surprised that they even put that in the eighth season DVD, because especially the intro from Elizabeth Montgomery. Yeah, as well. yeah, that was pretty wild. I, I just couldn't get over the fact that they did that. So, like I said, I didn't even know that existed. So it was like, oh, okay, this is getting interesting, which makes it only more logical that they should just do that for all the seasons. But I'm sure they will eventually. I mean, I, I think there's probably going to be enough of an 
I, I was going to say outcry, but I mean, I think there would be enough of a demand for it ultimately that they'll probably do it. Wow. I can't, I can't believe it. Well, um, I did send you the tweet to it, by the way. Can't You'll see the look. logo, so you're just like, <laughs> you know. Oh, there, there it is. There it is. Okay. No. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's nice. my theme. It's my theme. Sweet. Mm-hmm. All of its glory. <laughs> <laughs> and, oh, turning. and even though I didn't get to watch the game. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's the one. That's the one. Yes, I totally remember this. Oh, that's right. The game. Oh my God, we've been talking that long. We've been talking that long, but it's a good, it's a good day because guess what? My Eagles won, thirty-four to three. Are you kidding? Oh wow! Against the Steelers? There. Are you kidding? Thirty-four to three against the Steelers? That's e- even huge. I know that's a landslide. Oh look, that... sponsored by Bold Three. <laughs> Bold Three. And what that's was the hilarious. second sponsor? I can't remember the second one. Oh, wait, let me go back. Oh, come on. Say something to me here. Oh, I went back to you before. Oh, Dawn takes grease out of your way. Of course it uh, does. It's been doing that for 30 years. Yeah, I know. And as it still see, smells the same. You know? As you see from the from the year of the clip, yeah, it has. So. <laughs> 1986, I remember it well. Hmm. Which yeah. tells you I'm not 35 anymore. But. <laughs> not anymore, right? I cannot believe. I cannot believe 34 to three. That is amazingly huge, huge, huge. <laughs> I cannot believe my team is now three and zero. That's huge, and especially against the Steelers. I thought that would have been a close game. That's not even close. The Eagles slaughter them in that score. That, wow. that is uh, that is pretty much a, a beat down. Oh. Even I know that. Oh my god. Well, I guess I gotta get free coffee tomorrow too. <laughs> well, Dunkin' Donuts gives free coffee with the Eagles win in the game the next day. Oh so. really? That's funny. You gotta have the app, but yeah, I am uh I guess I'll be going to Dunkin' Donuts tomorrow morning for breakfast and getting a free coffee. Getting Good free, lord. Get getting that free coffee. I can't get over this. Carson Wentz is a beast. I need to. I'm. I'm totally getting like a Wentz jersey after this. This is huge. <laughs> I am totally getting a Wentz jersey. Carson Wentz, I bow down to you, man. Oh man, I. I can't. I can't believe it. I can't believe it. I, I'm officially done with life. <laughs> <laughs> I'm done with life. I'm just going. Okay, football. What are we talking about? <laughs> I'm done with life. I'm done with life. I can't believe it. I can't believe it. I remember my brother had electronic football when we were growing up. <laughs> it was the only kind of football I was any good at. The real one, forget it. It was just not going to happen. PE was my worst subject. Mm, mm, mm. Oh, Dude. my God, my absolute worst subject. Uh, I got to watch SportsCenter just to see how this game played out because, damn, man, that's amazing. Amazing feat. Oh. Yeah, you're gonna have to see how they got that 34 points now. Absolutely, absolutely. Well, this oh. has been a very, this has been a very good day. I got to talk to you about my favorite show of all time. Yeah, this is great. I like to say I just love the being able to rap about the level of detail. That's, it's such a a rarity that it's like wow. I, dude, let me tell you. Being able to talk about Bewitch and everybody asks me, what is your favorite show of all time? I said, Bewitch is number one. I mean, it literally is my number one show. And finally getting to talk to somebody about this show and detail that we did and even reciting lines with, I was just like, damn, this is fun. (laughs) I know. I completely agree. I mean, nobody else knows the lines in my world. It's just like, oh, my God. You probably were like – This stuff I played in my head. You probably were sitting there, and I was, re- and I started reciting lines. You're going like, "Oh my god, he knows the lines." <laughs> I know, I was, I was like, I thought I was the only one that knew the lines. You're not the only one that knows the lines. I no, no, that's true. I, I certainly learned that at, at, at Bewitched Fan Fair a couple of years ago. I mean, there's a lot of us out there. Believe me, we, as, we're my, we're a minority, but we're out there. We are the we're the silent. We're the silent majority. Yeah, majority. Yeah, yeah. We're part of the greatest minority there is. We're witches. 
Mm-hmm. And Battle of Burning Oak, another awesome episode. I was going to say the next line, but you stopped me. I'm sorry. <laughs> I was going to say, I think we can all agree that there's no such thing as a purebred American, unless it's an Indian. And an American Indian could never get in here. Boy, hey, whatever that and means. Then, <laughs> and, then she, and then the other woman faints on the couch. I was dying. I know. Jessica and Morton. It, and I, I, I swear, and I might be wrong, but I, all, I thought that was the actress that played the wife on the Beverly Hillbillies on the, of the bank, the, the, the bank. Oh, you know, because she uh, like again, that, that she does look like her. I mean, I'm not as familiar with that show because I haven't really watched it since I was a kid. And, and but ironically, it would fit her because that's how she was on the Beverly Hillbillies too. So I was like, hmm. Probably, that's definitely an IMDb question, but I, it's probably true. She does look like I, she would be, play that role. I think that was her. And then, what was the one in season five too? Samantha the maid, I think, or oh, Samantha Supermaid. Samantha Supermaid, and it. I I like that one too. What probably has that brute saddled you with? And. <laughs> and of course, Phyllis has to butt her nose in, and the the woman that she was with at the end of the show that steals the, the maid away, this is a little trivia for those that don't know, which I didn't know until TV Land started airing them when they were announcing the episode, that that woman was the voice of Norma Bates in the original Psycho movie. No way. Yeah. Oh my god, now that I have to look up, because that's, that's amazing. Yeah, that was that was a surprise to me when they said that that was the woman who who was the voice of Norma Bates in the 1960 movie of Psycho. Yeah. Oh my god, that's so funny. And I was like, when I heard that, when I heard them say that, I was like, I'm sitting there listening, trying to hear the voice of Norma come out of her mouth, and I didn't hear it, but it, I sort of did. It was. I'm gonna like have to go the... back to that episode and and, and compare it now because. Because that's, that's, that's a trip and a half right there is what that is. I was like, they were able to do that, huh? She was able to do that. And granted, this was this was literally, if not eight years later, nine years later. Because I don't know if that was 1968 that aired or 1969 it aired. But it oh, was within, Yeah. Uh, that would have been, our, I'm going to guess, early 69. Because it was like yeah. mid-season, so I would say early 69. Huh? So yeah, that would have been... Obviously, this just isn't my day, but uh, <laughs> that was the line of that episode, too. But it was, uh, yeah, that was nine years after Psycho. So, yeah, that... Oh, here it is. Yeah, I just, I was just IMDBing it just to look up the actress's name, and it says January 2nd, 1969, so it's right at the beginning. Mm. That was six, exactly six months before I was born. Wow. Uh, let's see. Virginia Gregg. Leslie Otis. Oh my God, that's not the most flattering picture of her. Oh goodness, is it that bad? <laughs> well, I mean, it's 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 from a movie of, of one of her movies, but uh, I don't know the context. I'm just going, oh my God. Uh, let's see, just scroll. Oh, she's very prolific. She's uh, credits just kind of go on forever. There it is, Psycho, Norma Bates. Voice uncredited. Amazing. I never knew that. I think part of me thought it was um, Anthony Perkins just doing a, a different voice. But uh, I, I've actually seen all of Hitchcock's movies uh, at, at one point or another. My, so, uh, I, I never watched Psycho until I turned 15. And I had nightmares. And <laughs> it's but, still, I mean, even though you know it's coming, it, it's you're still kind of freaked out watching but the funny but the funny thing of that is is that i had nightmares watching psycho but yet when i watched the birds when i was seven i didn't have nightmares from that (laughs) that's funny because that's a lot more violent it was a lot that was a lot more violent and i literally went to bed without any nightmares watching after watching the birds and i was i think maybe maybe it's because like applying it to your own life you know, you're, the chances of your eyes getting pecked up by a flock of birds probably isn't very good. But feasibly, somebody could murder you in the showers. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So that must be it. Not to mention that, 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 and of course, they were going for that in the film, too, that 
that ultimate feeling of vulnerability being in the shower because what are you going to do? I mean, 